Hello everyone, it's Richard Lewis here again with another video. Uh, haven't made a pre-recorded video for a while. Been focusing on some other projects, uh, e-league work, uh, been live streaming a lot more, trying to get that going. Uh, and of course, those who follow my Twitter feed will know, just had a pretty wild holiday in Vegas. Uh, and upon my return, um, it, uh, I, I was sent some legal documents. And they were like, hey, you definitely want to keep an eye out uh, on, on this developing story. So some stories that we've covered in this channel and that I've covered in my career just keep on going and going and have these wide-reaching ramifications. Well, it turns out that Phantom Lord, the streamer, James Varga, um, has decided to take legal action against twitch he's got a lawyer they're going to sue twitch they have filed a lawsuit um and the reason for this seems to be he was in a contract uh, with twitch at the time for two years it was an extension of an existing contract and he believes this contract was terminated unfairly um because it's never been made publicly clear why twitch did indeed terminate the contract i guess we're all stuck sort of having to you know speculate as to why it is or that was the case now we've got this legal document we can look at what uh mr varga is saying look at what phantom lord is saying and sort of dig into it so i was reading it like you know when i came back and um wanted to get a video and get my perspective it's a particular interest to me because not only was it my story i am named in the lawsuit and there's some uh, demonstrably false things said in the lawsuit about me. So that's interesting. Um, I've already notified my lawyers uh, just to say, hey, this is the lawsuit I'm named in. This is false. The things they're saying about me. Is there anything we can do? So um, we're going to get into that, I suppose, probably down the road. Like I say, it's, it's just such a insane clusterfuck. All because somebody won't take it on the chin that you know you did this these were the consequences now get on with your life you know i mean i don't work for twitch i have no affiliation with twitch per se other than being another streamer um i had nothing to do with his twitch ban uh, certainly didn't foresee that he would be banned from twitch when i published the story i didn't think of any consequences beyond trying to stop what he was doing so or, or do we have to pretend allegedly doing i don't know Anyway, um, let's get into the legal document. Uh, I've, I've got it uh, here, uh, and I put it on Scribed because it's on one of those um, sites where you have to uh, pay, and I can't get it to work in my recorder. So uh, let's just go into it, um, and you can see here, this is it being filed. And um, I'll, I'll give you, I mean, I'll, I'll, there's so many interesting parts to it. I'm probably going to read out most of the documents. So this might be a lengthy video, but at least you'll get all the information. I saw a few people already starting to put screenshots out there. You know, I want this to be kind of the one-stop shop, the holistic breakdown. Um, and of course, it uh, goes without saying I'm not a, not a lawyer. Um, but I've been around a lot of things, so I will probably give my opinion on a few, um, you know, things to do with this lawsuit but anyway uh, you can see here this is an action for monetary damages and injunctive relief brought for violations of the laws of the state of california including sections 17200 of the business and professions code and for breach of contract intentional interference with contractual relations and intentional and negligent misrepresentation james varga is a resident of las vegas nevada and from 2011 through the present has remained one of the most popular online and social media personalities with within the blossoming esports and competitive video gaming industry. It's quite interesting, actually. They assert throughout all of this that he is to do with esports. Um, I wonder if that's something to do with the fact that esports is kind of blooming right now and it might speak to him being able to get more damages. But of course, we all know, I mean, t he had a tangential link to esports at best. He was very briefly a competitive League of Legends player, uh, hasn't excelled or achieved anything of any real note in any other game. Uh, so, and, and his streams were towards the end 
pretty much 50-50, if not more predominantly, him sort of gambling and using the CSGO skins mechanisms within the game. So uh, that's that's like saying all these other people, you know, T. Martin and, and stuff like that are, are into esports. They're, they're there, they're on the periphery, but they're not really industry people. Um, Varga initially gained recognition as a competitive player in the League of Legends game and later in the game Counter-Strike Global Offensive. I, I mean, I don't know if they're trying to imply he's a player there. Uh, in late 2012, Twitch TV Incorporated approached Varga with an opportunity for Varga to begin broadcasting online streaming content on the Twitch TV platform. For nearly four years, beginning in November 2012, Varga served as one of Twitch's most popular and successful content providers. I mean, this is this is fair comment. Uh, Varga amassed approximately 16,000 paid subscribers on his Twitch TV account, had well over a million followers, making it uh, in, in the top 10, and his online content for Twitch was viewed over 88 million times. Because of this immense popularity, Varga's content on Twitch TV contributed significant value to Twitch's brand. Throughout the Twitch TV platform, Varga gained numerous valuable sponsorships and business opportunities. Despite Varga's popularity and success, on or around July 19th, 2016, without notice, Twitch improperly suspended Varga's Twitch TV account and then terminated the contract. Twitch has never provided any formal explanation for suspension. This is interesting because this is a little bit contradictory to what is said later on. There's been several explanations. They, they later argue that the explanations change. So they, they certainly have. They might not have at the time of termination, but that's some very vague and fuzzy wording there. Um, and you'll notice there's like little spelling errors and inconsistencies in the document. A few people have been laughing about that. I've seen some terribly written legal documents in my time that have somehow stood up. So I'm, I'm less uh, less inclined to, to, to mock it and I'll, I'll treat it with the respect it deserves. Um, Twitch has only made vague and ever-changing allegations of breaches of the terms of service. Twitch has attempted to excuse its conduct by alleging that Varga broadcast improper content, yet Varga broadcasted content similar to what many of the popular Twitch content providers also broadcast. And in fact, during the course of Varga's performance of his contractual obligations as a content provider, representatives from Twitch repeatedly informed Varga that he was permitted to broadcast the very content that they later used as an excuse to illegally terminate his contract. Significantly, under the terms of Varga's contract, Twitch was required to provide written notice of any purported violations of the contract and was further required to provide Varga with an opportunity to cure his purported violations within 30 days. However, Twitch provided no such notice, much less opportunity to cure these alleged violations. Now, I've got to say this. I haven't seen the contract they've signed. That's going to be hugely important because there might be a clause in there which says they can terminate at any time. I would be amazed if they brought a lawsuit, should such a clause exist, that would be incredibly stupid, borderline frivolous. But um, equally, I can't imagine a company as big as Twitch not putting in the significant and suitable legal protections to protect them from needing to suddenly terminate a partner's contract for whatever reason. And, you know, the current state of Twitch right now, we all know it. People get banned left, right, and center with very little formal communication or, or reasoning and we, we know there's a lot of inconsistency in a lot of these bands which is a situation twitch is trying to remedy by bringing out this new terms of service which they've had to put back because the first announcement wasn't clear so you know I, they're, they're definitely i mean there is a chance right but they obviously think a lot uh, about this banning because it's become such an important part of what they do on a day-to-day -day basis um and certainly they've made protestations in the media saying we're gonna take all this you know hate and, and, and abuse and harassment we're taking all that very seriously so i can't imagine they would jump to that stage unless they had a robust contract that enabled them to terminate at will it would seem very strange to me um this is where it gets interesting more well for me more egregiously Twitch justifies its illegal breach by pointing to unsubstantiated false accusations leveled at Varga by a third party, whose accusations were the culmination of an effort to publicly disparage Varga and take advantage of his popularity. Now, this, is, I assume, I'm not named specifically in this part, but I assume this does refer to me. Now, um, here's, what, here's what I will say. First of all, 
are they false or unsubstantiated? Um, you know, I'm not saying that that is contradictory, that it can't be both, but it was certainly substantiated. If, you know, it was substantiated by interviewing other people involved, checking times and dates, substantiated by the Skype logs themselves. And indeed, in this very legal document, which you'll see, they do not deny the, that the Skype logs are real. So finally, all the Phantom Lord fans that have been spamming me with that shit for years now, um, you, you know, for over a year, saying that the logs were clearly faked and edited. Well, not according to Mr. Varga's own counsel. Um, so, so the idea that, that it was unsubstantiated is very strange. And the idea that if it was false, I myself wouldn't have been subject to a lawsuit. And maybe that's the plan, depending on how Twitch goes. But as I've said all along, there's so much evidence we didn't put out there because we wanted to protect other people, you know, b bank details, uh, you know, interviews. We, we, we kept hold of it because we felt there's no need for anything except this important part of the story to get out and people will trust what i report because i'm a trustworthy reporter but we'll talk about me more later on uh, though twitch has benefited significantly from varga participation as a twitch tv content provider and varga had helped twitch um, had helped increase twitch tv's visibility and market share twitch dropped varga without warning without explanation without ever asking varga about the accusations it is clear from Twitch's conduct that the stated basis for suspension and termination were an effort to def deflect negative press and scapegoat Varga, allowing Twitch to publicly decry alleged gambling conduct and divert attention from the fact that Twitch continue to knowingly allow such conduct to continue on other Twitch channels. Um, I mean, again, this is a, a bit weird because it wasn't... It, you know what I mean? It wasn't that... It wasn't the fact that you were just streaming gambling that was the issue. You know, and, and certainly I do not know why you were suspended. But then there was the issue of there was fake subscribers subscribing to your channel after you were banned. So that in itself, and, and that was inarguable either. And again, that is admitted in this document. So that to me seems, you know, it, it doesn't matter if you paid for them. Twitch have been very clear. If somebody view bots your stream, there is a chance that you will get banned for it, even though it's beyond your control. So, um, you know, that, that's been historically proven. So I imagine it's the same for fake subs. Um, it says here, as a result of def the defendant Twitch's unfair and unjustified conduct, which was not only in clear violation of the party's contract, but also independently tortious, Varga has suffered damages and harm. Accordingly... Varga seeks monetary damages and injunctive relief. So we can skip through all of this. The jurisdiction, the parties, not very uh, interesting. Now here is where they start to break down the contract that was signed. And some of this does seem to be a bit of a headache for some, that you pay when you have like legacy costs. When when a business like constantly evolves and you're updating people's contracts and stuff. It's like a throwback to the good old days when you did stuff differently. Um, sometimes, you know, maybe there is a clause in a contract that y you're not co thinking about when you, you know, release them or take a punitive measure against them in the present day, right? Because you're actually operating on a contract you would no longer issue. So... Varga was at all relevant times a content provider for Twitch, who broadcast online streaming content, of course, until t November 2012. Varga broadcasted online streaming content on owned TV. Rest in peace. In 2012, Twitch recruited Varga to become a content provider on Twitch. Jason OP Babo, now no longer at Twitch, if memory serves me correctly, uh, a former owned TV employee who had been recruited to join Twitch, contacted Varga as part of Twitch's recruitment efforts and later became Varga's Twitch manager on november 12 2012 twitch and varga signed the, the content license and base network agreement which will be here on referred to as the contract whereby varga became a twitch content provider pursuant to the contract the parties agreed to revenue sharing relating to revenues generated both from advertising on varga's twitch tv account and from paid subscriptions to varga's twitch tv account varga was in further entitled to receive 70 percent of the monthly gross subscription revenues for his channel, with Twitch receiving the remaining 30%. On information and belief, Twitch receives 50% of the monthly gross revenues earned for less popular Twitch TV channels. I mean, again, I, I would feel comfortable making that a statement of fact. It's there in black and white on their website. 
Um, the contract was for a term of two years, at which time the contract automatically renewed for a period of one year, unless one party gave notice of non-renewal 90 days before the expiration of the term. However, on April 1st, 2014, the parties entered into an amendment and extension that extended the contract for an additional two years and incorporated by reference the one-year automatic renewal. Throughout the duration of the contract, neither Twitch nor Varga provided any notice of non-renewal of the contract. Other than by expiration and non-renewal, the contract can only be terminated for breach or bankruptcy of either party. Under the terms of the contract, to effectuate a termination for breach, the non-breaching party must give written notice of the alleged breach. The non-breaching party can only terminate the contract if the alleged breach is not cured within 30 days of the breaching party's receipt of the written notice. So again, if you take that at face value, basically what they're saying is Twitch never issued the reason for the termination in writing, and they were compelled to do so. But what's also something to remember here, that based on the fact that it was an extended contract, and that the termination took place three months in to the extended uh, extension of the contract all damages that phantom lord is trying to get here would only scale nine months because that was all the contract was due to run and if they were obligated to honor that they would only be obligated to honor nine months so Again, the lawsuit seems very bizarre to me because even if it was, even if you were successful in winning damages based on the fact the contract was, you know, falsely uh, or improperly, I should say, terminated, you wouldn't, you, you, you know, the, the amount you would be spending on legal fees and, and lawyers and everything to get there, he might put you out of pocket. And then you're going to get some damages back. And then, you know, you got to pay, you know, Twitch will obviously have to pay fees, but maybe not all the fees. So it's 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 a it seems a bit of a weird gamble almost for nine months of damages, which I have no idea what he was making monthly on Twitch, but I can't imagine, yeah, you know, I can't imagine this is an astronomical amount of money. Uh, but whatever, you know, and and also keep in mind as well, it, they might argue, well, you were able to go and stream on other. Uh, platforms so maybe it would be the difference between what you would make on an average youtube stream and you know how they calculate the damages is going to be sort of at the court's discretion uh anyway uh vargas success so you can see here it talks a lot about he's an esports personality his name is phantom lord um again repeats the stuff we saw in the opening um he was one of the most recognizable figures in the esports industry again um millions of views to twitch yada 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 and then it talks about his online content here per the terms of service of his contract with twitch Fargo was free to broadcast a variety of online content with the only limitation being that the content would not violate twitch's content guidelines during his broadcast on his twitch tv account Varga frequently streamed esports and competitive competitive video gaming content including playing the game counter-strike global offensive and again this is a little bit of an obfuscation isn't it like case openings and bettings and you know I'm, I'm sure he did run around and shoot some people sometimes but it's a little bit disingenuous um in addition to streaming his competitive video gaming varga also from time to time broadcasts content other than playing the video games the contract does not prohibit non-gaming content nor does the contract restrict the amount of time varga could stream non-gaming content twitch's content guidelines in terms of service are silent as to the length of time a content provider may stream non-gaming content this obviously refers to his gambling and again if you watched his stream towards the end uh it was pretty much all he did he sat there and streamed and if it's the same over at his youtube channel now you know he he pretty much would just do you know gambling all day you know, as much as he could get away with uh twitch's con uh yeah we did that bit uh however on multiple occasions in 2016 babo advised varga that as a content provider varga was permitted to broadcast non-gaming content including gambling for 30 consecutive minutes and no more for example on may 27th 2016 vargas twitch manager babo stated hey phantom i was told to let you know again that you've been streaming csgo gambling for longer than 30 minutes remember what i said last time don't do the csgo gambling as the main focus of your stream don't let it go 30 minutes at a time play some then do a bit if you want just not be the focus of your stream now we brought this up um i think it was in another video uh we interviewed some of phantom laws moderators from the channel again further substantiation dare i say it and they told us that he had received this warning so all of a sudden everything that mod told me looks even more robust doesn't it even though i saw the evidence but you guys can see you know you didn't see all of the evidence 
views guys can see phantom lords mod also told us about this warning and lo and behold here it is in a legal document with skype logs as evidence they're actually attached as exhibit uh well a bunch of exhibit numbers for each uh, picture uh days later babo told varga you have been reported again because of the whole csgo gambling for longer 30 minutes situation you shouldn't be doing it longer than a few minutes to just play it safe. Honestly, it's a clusterfuck. This entire rule is confusing as hell. Ha ha. So time it. Do what you think is correct. I just wouldn't risk it. Honestly, I have gone ahead and emailed internally to get you a proper answer for your good questions, which I'm sure can be used for other partners who ask the same thing. Because honestly, this whole longer than 30 is just odd to me. Why you can do it for 30 but not longer. Ha. It, is it 30 in one sitting? Is it 30 cooldown? 30? Not even I know. Now, here's what I'll say about this. Um, this is concerning because this says to me, Twitch implemented a policy and didn't really sh share it with all of the staff, people who were managing people's accounts who really needed to know this, could, said they didn't know this. Now, this could be that Twitch um, didn't communicate effectively with their staff, or it could be incompetence of one staff member. You, you know, I, I, we'll have to find out from from twitch i guess when they present their side of the argument and answer these specific claims but the bottom line is just on the surface just looking at that skype log you can see that twitch didn't communicate the rule effectively and also didn't seem to know what the rule was or certainly the manager of his account didn't seem to know what the rule was uh a copy of uh, the Skype exchange is attached as Exhibit A. Uh, in reliance uh, on Twitch's representations, Varga limited his broadcasting of non-gaming-related content on his Twitch TV account to approximately 30 consecutive minutes or less. I would be amazed if that was true. Uh, I imagine Twitch must have retained some of his VODs. I'm pretty sure if you went through and timed it, there was, there was moments where he was streaming for an hour, two hours of just gambling, gambling, gambling. You know, he only ever seemed to correct it from my memory um when it was reported and he had to and that was bore out by the mod logs that we saw and everything else now it talks here about the suspension specifically in july 2016 varga was scheduled to travel to germany to participate in a sponsorship project at esl1 on july 3rd varga did his final stream prior to his pre-planned trip and then traveled to germany over two weeks later on july 19th without any notice or warning twitch suspended his account indefinitely without any explanation at that time twitch did not allege that varga was in breach of content nor did twitch provide varga with a written notice similarly twitch did not respond to varga within 30 days rather twitch sent an email to varga purporting to notify varga of an indefinite suspension for violations of the terms of service but they did not specify the nature of the violation nor did they identify the conduct that it alleged amounted to a violation in fact twitch did not provide provide Varga with any explanation till January the 7th 2017 nearly five months after Twitch suspended Varga's Twitch TV account at that time a Twitch representative explained there had been a fraud there had been fraudulent subscribers to Varga's account a circumstance over which Varga had no control now this here um is the fake sub thing that we talked about now why is that important well you all remember the moment uh of, of streaming history when phantom lord had uh, the this unbelievably that it, it was, they wanted to break the record for the longest sub train and he turned his stream off if you remember for a while before it to prepare for the stream so all the subs would drop off and then he could get that sub train going now that happened and a lot of people have speculated that there was somebody whoever it may be had, fa had put fake subscribers in there to help it along because these fake subs were subbing uh, you know at a pretty regular frequency it was every few minutes or so and this was meant to like kickstart sub trains keep it ticking over make sure it didn't drop or whatever that was the theory crafting behind it all i know for sure is his account inarguably had fake subscribers subscribing to it in a, a very regular amount of time and it lasted for i think like an entire day after he was banned now as i've said fake subs i'm pretty sure whether you do them or not it's a violation of twitch's terms of service and it, it's one of those things that sucks because you could get banned and indeed people who do fake subs and people who do um 
view bots, what they do is they put them on your stream and then they message you and say, hey, if you don't pay us, we'll keep doing it and you'll get banned from Twitch. Of course, then you've at least got the evidence uh, to go to Twitch after, after the fact. But some people are worried about losing the stream, worried that Twitch won't believe them. Some people pay the money. Obviously, if you're view botting somebody, you, know, you might be going to DDoS them or whatever else. So, you know, th that's one of the ways that these people make uh, make their money. Anyway, uh, after the fake sub, subsequently Twitch changed its explanation for the indefinite suspension, alleging that Barga's online content, including his non-gaming content, violated the content guidelines. Now, that obviously specifically refers to his constant case opening, constant gambling. And you have to remember that this was a pretty bad time for that whole thing. It wasn't a good look, was it? Because you had kissed people not disclosing ownership. You had people um you know rigging outcomes you know think csgo diamonds with mo and stuff uh, so the, the the provably fair systems were all nonsense so you, there was a lot going on at the time and obviously i think this made twitch squeamish rightly so about what this was doing to the audience that were being exposed to it now this here is unreal uh, twitch also later alleged that Varga had violated the Twitch terms of service based on uns unsubstantiated allegations that had been leveled against him by Richard Lewis, a Breitbart esports reporter who accused Varga of cheating on game-related gambling sites. Lewis published his allegations on July 16th and 18th, 2016, clearly timed to generate maximum traffic and maximum harm while Varga was participating at the ESL One event in Germany. Now... Um, let's just let's just get into this. Um, so first of all, it, it's worrying to me when a lawyer can't even do perfunctory research. Uh, all you would have to do to find out I was not a Breitbart esports reporter at the time this story broke is click on my LinkedIn. It's got my face on it. You can see my entire employment history on it within esports because um, that's all that's really relevant. Um, there it is. That's my CV, effectively. It's there. It's public. Anyone can see it. And that's all this lawyer would have to do is Google my name and go to my LinkedIn page. They didn't do that. And they're saying I'm a Breitbart esports reporter when I wasn't. I was actually working for Turner Sports when I broke this story. So that's worrying, isn't it? If that's your, you know, if that's the person that's meant to have all the facts in order. Bit weird. Uh, then on top of that, it says I accused him of cheating on game-related gambling sites. Not really. Not really what I, I said at all, actually. Uh, well, I was very specific in the reports because this is what the Skype logs showed, uh, and that was that he hadn't disclosed ownership of a site, uh, which is an FTC violation. Um, and on top of that, uh, he had been asking the coder of the site for percentages. And we went through and we proved that, that indeed the, the times and the dates of the Skype logs all matched up with gambling that had occurred and, and giveaways that had occurred. We checked everything on, on the Skype records. Um, and yeah, just a bit bizarre. There's, I'm, I'm not saying he cheated on game-related gambling sites. I'm saying on the one he specifically had control over, he asked the coder to give him percentages so he could win roles when he needed to he didn't do it for every role he didn't do it for multiple sites but he did but it's there it's there in black and white and we verified it and we double verified it and we triple verified it and we sent it out to independent journalists to verify it you know and and like i say this part especially is wild to say that i timed it for maximum effect um is just insane and it's such a wild allegation I got sent the the original, right, so first of all, there was a tweet of a now banned account um, that had gone out publicly, and nobody paid it any attention, and it was a phantom lord asking for the percentages, and that was what I, I suspect the original hacker who had hacked the Skype logs. Then on the 11th of July, um, I got sent the unedited unaltered complete raw database of the skype logs which is what the hacker had obtained and keep in mind he had deliberately he deliberately kept access to phantom lords skype 
to build up as m many records as he could effectively download. So there's months and months of records here, months and months of conversations. And he took the database and gave it to me on the 11th. Now, that was after I'd already seen these other tweets and rumblings out there and people accusing Phantom Lord of it. So I started digging in to the logs. I spent two days, me and Sam uh, spent two days wide awake, without sleep, just pouring over these logs, meticulously checking it all because we knew we couldn't get afford to get this wrong. A man's reputation was on the line. Um, you know, these had to be verified. Now we went, we 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 talked to people um, who know about coding and Skype, and they told us there's no way that the Skype database is, is faked or edited. We talked to people that were named in the fucking conversations. Did you have this conversation? They showed us their Skype logs from their side of the conversation. They verified the details in it. We checked dates, we checked times, we checked everything for two fucking sleepless days. And then, and only then, when we had it all laid out, we contacted uh, Phantom Lord. And I can prove that. Because fortunately, um, I kept the um, the Skype logs. Um, and I, I've took a screenshot of them here. So you can just see here this idea that we didn't give James an opportunity to respond or uh, any of that nonsense. Uh, we've, we've edited out anything that might enable you to see that you know his his skype address or whatever but you can see here first picture um uh hey chief the, thanks for the ad and this is on the date uh wednesday july 13th 2016 hey chief thanks for the ad you got time for a call hey dude yeah sorry for getting back to you so late wrecked life because of cologne fuck that flight home it's okay man i know you're a busy guy so you can see here, I mean, I don't have a specific memory of this, but it even appears that I waited until he got back from Cologne to get in touch with him. So the, or, 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 uh, you know, so the idea that I had timed this is nonsense. I got, the, I got the documents on the 11th, and then I messaged him on the 13th. Right? That's pretty thorough, in my opinion. And I said, it's okay, man, I know you're a busy guy. I'm, I'm a bit busy at the moment. We can chat for now if that's cool. What's up, though? And I said, let's talk. I'll call you. And then you can see here, um, I did call, but he did not pick up my call. And I said, hit me up when you have time. Reason for not put, putting anything in chat is for your benefit. And the reason I say that is because I didn't know if this hacker still had access to his Skype logs. I didn't know if it was going to be compromised. And again, at this point... I am trying to get a statement from James. James might have said something to me that made me understand or or made it look like he hadn't done the things he'd done. He could have given me a compelling story. Um, but, you know, he had no interest in doing that. And as I said, I think everything that's come out subsequently, it, it, it verifies the report, you know? So... Um, I said, uh, yeah, so I'm not putting anything in the chat for your benefit. So even though I appreciate you're busy, you should know me well enough to know I'd not bother you if it wasn't important. I'm going to turn in soon. Hopefully we can connect tomorrow, but it will give you less time. And I honestly want to give you as much as, a pos as possible as a courtesy, right? I mean, this, this is, I'm sat on this red hot story. There's parts of it that are out there in public. Uh, the, 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 the public have a right to know so i'm trying to walk both lines here and you can see that from the conversation sure let's chat tomorrow or sometime noon i'm dead after my stream today and yeah doing a few things seems pretty serious though can i at least what it's about yeah i'll try and grab you in the afternoon between e-league games because i was working at e-league and not breitbart remember um and, I, and then i said just this gambling stuff that's been coming on these past few days winds have changed etc and then on saturday july 16th which is when we published i was like look I know it's your weekend. It's getting to critical mass in terms of speaking with you. Hope you can give me some time today. So I gave him three whole days to respond to a story. That is beyond industry standard. He did not call me. He did not email me. He did not attempt to contact me in any way, shape, or form for three whole days. And then, yes, that was when we put the story out. So the idea that i deliberately timed this because oh i want to leverage his popularity or whatever absolute nonsense and it's there it's there in black and white that is a verifiable lie in that legal document um so anyway back to that legal document we're getting towards the end uh let's go down mm. uh so here it says the allegations that's the allegations in my video against Varga are untrue okay 
and based on unchecked speculation arising from illegally obtained electronic records. So this is crucial because they're saying the Skype logs are real. <laughs> they're real. They're unedited. They, they, you know, because you cannot illegally obtain something that doesn't exist. <laughs> so well, thanks for that, I guess. Um, you are literally saying those Skype logs are real. I know they're real. Thank you. Thank you for putting it in a legal document that they're real. Uh, and and your is your is representation, so that you must know they're real. Um, so that's great. Uh, but but th saying they're unchecked speculation. I mean, I'm a reporter. I check everything. I check and double check and triple check, and I can prove how in depth I checked it because I've retained because I knew there'd be some fuckery. So I've kept everything from that time period and made backups and made backups of the backups. So I'm I'm game to fucking put it all out there, be it in a court or wherever. Um, I, you know, this this can't be allowed to stand because this story was true. And again, I believe it would be me named in the lawsuit otherwise. Uh, anyway... Twitch never asked Varga about the allegations or otherwise discussed them with him, despite the fact that Varga was among Twitch TV's most popular and lucrative content providers. Instead, Twitch apparently accepted as true the false allegations published by an unscrupulous commentator who also did not interview Varga or disclose the allegations to him before publishing them. I absolutely did not interview Varga. That much is true. But as you can see from the Skype logs, I have shown you I attempted to call him. I told him to call me. I gave him three days three whole days to respond that is beyond an industry courtesy i even explained to him it is very important and serious and i am not going to put it in chat because that is for your protection i don't think i could have been more professional in my handling of this honestly um and i was very cognizant of that because i've known james a long time i covered when he got swatted and all that hacking nonsense i've met him in person you know, I have no desire to just wildly destroy reputations. That's not what I'm in the business of doing. But equally, I am also in the business of protecting the public from people that do, ooh, what's the word, unscrupulous things. So the idea I'm unscrupulous, I don't know. I mean, that's, that's an allegation in and of itself. Um, anyway, the harm. Um, as a result of the improper suspension uh varga has incurred significant monetary damages specifically as a result of the suspension of varga's account twitch has improperly denied varga his right to revenue generated from subscribers advertisers and viewers on his twitch tv account it's interesting that it's referred to as a right there i'm, I'm pretty sure that isn't the case but okay as as the result of the suspension of varga's account twitch has also caused significant reputational harm to varga who has now been prevented from broadcasting on the most popular and widely viewed platform within the esports and competitive video gaming industry for over one year without any justification in addition to the loss of revenues earned from his broadcasting content on his twitch tv account varga has also suffered the loss of numerous sponsorship opportunities relating to his status as a professional entertainer it's very interesting actually to to go down that route because i think if you say um he didn't get the sponsorship deals specifically because of the twitch thing i think another argument might be he didn't get the sponsorship deals uh because you know because of the type of content he was involved in not everybody wants to be associated with case openings and gambling and certainly people who are in the business of gambling and case opening aren't going to be that squeamish necessarily about doing business with somebody who is now known for case opening and gambling so it seems a bit of a strange argument but you know whatever anyway it then lays out um what that what they want the specific damages for uh for in the course of actions um all the way through so it's basically there's five courses of actions this is the one that's more interesting the others just repeat what we've already seen this is interesting because it claims Twitch has violated the Business and Professions Code, uh, Section 17200. Uh, um, so it says here, Plaintiff hereby re-alleges and incorporates by reference each of the allegations of all the paragraphs above. Um, Twitch's acts, omissions, policies, and practices uh, set forth above constitute unfair competition, which is in violation of the Business and Professions Code. Twitch's business practices, as alleged above, constitute unlawful, unfair, and or fraudulent business practices within the meaning of Section 17200 of the Business and Professions Code. Among other things, Twitch's business practices are unfair because they are injurious and or their utility is outweighed by the harm caused. 
as the most established, popular, widely viewed, and influential platform for broadcasting esports and competitive video gaming, Twitch controls an essential medium for personalities such as Varga to participate in a multi billion dollar industry. Twitch's targeting and suspension of Varga was arbitrary, made without justification, and in violation of Twitch's obligations under contract. Twitch's practice of asserting contractual rights that it does not have, namely, the ability to arbitrarily suspend Varga's Twitch TV account without explanation, without written notice, and without presenting a 30-day opportunity for Varga to cure any violations, constitutes an unfair business practice. These unlawful and unfair business practices are likely to continue and present a continuing threat to the public. Therefore, Varga requests a permanent injunction pursuant to Business and Professions Code Section 17203 to enjoin and refrain Twitch from continuing its unfair business practices and to order Twitch to immediately lift Varga's suspension and restore his Twitch TV account. And then you can see here, this will be the damages. This is what they want. And then this is the signature. So that's the that's pretty much the the meat of it all. I mean, you know, you can see there we we read pretty much all of the document. That's the that's the initial lawsuit filing. There will be other documents to follow. I'll follow the case right the way through. Um, but but honestly, again, it, it's a bit of a strange one. Um, certainly, I, I can see some issues with the way that it seemed to be handled internally by Twitch. But equally, you got to remember this is only one side of the story, and it's the side of the story presented by the person that's paid by phantom lord to present as good a side of the story as possible and i've just shown you there's lies in this document pertaining to me so who knows um it's a very one-sided account of something that seems to take no personal responsibility whatsoever um and i i got linked to a vod of his most recent stream where he even said I've got to keep streaming gambling on YouTube because it will help with the lawsuit. And he was talking about how the lawsuit was filed. So that's very interesting um, because I, I don't understand why that would be the case. It doesn't really make sense um, unless you were trying to make a comparison between YouTube and Twitch as to what's okay and what isn't. Well, that's a much broader thing and nothing you can really do about. You can't dictate to Twitch what they want on their platform. So very bizarre. Probably it's just honestly an excuse to justify um, you know, the continued the continued type of content he's putting out, which is absolutely fine. Again, it's all legitimate now. No one has an issue. So, um, anyway, uh, there you go. I mean, I, you know, I know you guys are always interested in this stuff. Um, and like I say, I was involved. So there was no chance I was going to pass this one up. Uh, but yes, uh, apparently um th this lawsuit's going to go ahead and it, no doubt it's going to be very very in interesting i've also got to say I, I can't think of a notable time amazon's lost a, a lawsuit um so this is going to be rock'em sock'em um robots i guess uh but yeah so there you go uh, anyway i hope you enjoyed the video and the breakdown sorry if it was overly long you know how it is it's a legal document i waffle and legal documents tend to waffle but there you have it so i'll keep you up to date with everything that's going on perhaps even might have some announcements of my own in regards to this case uh, depending on what you know happens next and yeah just um you know thanks for watching the video and i'll see you on the next one take care